concave lens of a convex mirror and a concave mirror. So let me do one at a time. So let's do the convex lens first. So a convex lens, it's a lens that, you know, this is glass. It could be plastic too or, you know, some other material, but then you have air over here and you have air over there. So, you know, you have this glass over here, right? And um, the way that I define the focal length that it's normally defined is like this. Consider three, three is enough. Consider three incident and parallel rays of light. Just consider three incident parallel rays of light. The one in the middle, it's along what's called the principal axis of the lens. The principal axis is like perpendicular to the surface and perpendicular to the surface. So this is the principal axis of the lens. Principal, not principal axis of the lens. Okay? Now, let's apply the law of refraction. I'm going to do this here in a way that's big. Let's say this is a lens. So this is glass. This is air. Remember, the initial refraction is like 1.5. This is like one. This is air. N is one. Okay? <coughs> and I'm interested in the light that's gonna go through the lens. <coughs> if I send in a beam of light, Along the principal axis, therefore, it's coming in at 90 degrees. What's the angle of incidence? Zero. Zero. So what should the angle of refraction be? Zero. Zero. So it's just going to go straight through. And then it's going to hit at 90 degrees. So the angle of refraction is also going to be zero. So therefore, so this light ray is just going to go straight through. I'm going to use... How about I use red for the light that goes through the lens? All right. In other words, it's not like the light changes color. That's not what I'm implying over here. I want you to focus on the light that went through the lens, right? It's the red one. Coming in is the blue light. Right? Now, what if I send in a light ray over here? Now, the normal to this surface over here will be something like this, right? Something like that, right? So the angle of incidence is this, right? When the light travels from the air into the glass, will it bend towards the normal or away from the normal? Towards the normal, because it's going to slow down. So it's going to, I'm going to kind of draw it like this. And then when it hits this back surface, the normal is like that. Will it now bend as it goes from the glass in, back into the air? Will it bend towards or away from the normal? Away. So I'm going to do it like this. So I'm just going to show that like this. Right? What if I consider the other light ray coming in down here? The normal is like this. Is it going to be towards or away from the normal? And then when it goes from the glass into the air, it's going to bend towards or away from the... Away. Away. So then it's going to go like this. So I'm just going to draw this like this. Now, this point over here, where they cross, after going through the lens, it's called the focal point. The focal point. And the distance from that point to the center of the lens is the focal length. There. By the way, a convex lens 
A convex lens is, if you want to know, it's, I like to say it's thick in the middle and thin in the edges. So if, you, if I give you a convex lens and you touch it and it kind of go like this, you'll see that in the middle it's thick, but then it gets thin in the edges. Kind of like this, right? More glass in the middle, less glass in the edges. It's thin in the edges, thin in the edges, thick in the middle. It's a convex lens. Now, the focal point is this. Did the light rays actually cross at that focal point? Or do they just seem to cross there? Cross or seem to cross? Yeah. They actually cross over there. So because they cross, for a convex lens, F is positive. Let me do the second one. Concave lens. Well, a concave lens, it's, it's like this. So you got the glass here and here, right? So notice, it's thin in the middle and thick in the edges. If you, you know. <laughs> so, now I'm gonna draw the light rays like this. I mean, I'm gonna draw the focal length like, I mean, the can lens like this. So here's the principal axis. To me, I'm a little bit. So this is the principal axis. Right? And again, same same thing as with the convex lens, and it's going to be the same thing with the mirrors. I consider three incident parallel parallel rays of light and parallel to the principal axis. So I'm just going to consider three light rays, one like this, another one parallel to it, and one of them along the principal axis, and the other one like that. Now, what about the light ray that goes right along the principal axis? So here's the principal axis, let's say. So this one comes in like this, right? What's the angle of incidence? Zero. zero. So the angle of refraction is zero, so it goes straight through, hits at 90 degrees, it just goes straight through, right? So I'm going to use the red for the light that went through, which is going to be like this. Right? Now, what about if I consider the light that goes through here? What if we consider that one? When it goes into the glass, will it bend towards the normal or away from the normal? Towards the normal. But for this surface of it here, the normal is like this, right? So it's gonna bend towards the normal. And then when it goes and hits that surface, it's gonna travel from the glass back into the air, will it bend towards or away from the normal? Away, so then it's gonna go like that. So what I'm gonna draw here is something like, I'm just gonna draw something like this, okay? And then it's gonna go straight in the air, right? And what if I consider a light ray over here, like this? The normal is like that, it's gonna bend towards the normal, and then it's gonna hit that back surface, and then it's gonna bend away uh -huh. from the normal. So therefore, in the light that went through the lens, right? Do the light rays come to a focus at some point 
after going through the lens? No. So how do we even define a focal point if they don't ever focus on the other side of this lens? So what you do is this. You say, well, they never cross. But if I think that this lens is not there, I can say that they came from here as if they came from here. That one came from there, and that one came from there. So they seem to come from there. They actually don't come from there. They only seem to come from there. So again, this would be the focal point. Point. And the distance from that focal point to the center of the lens is the focal length. Now, that focal point, do the light rays actually make it there, or do they just seem to come from there? Therefore, you say F is A. Here, they actually cross and meet over there. F is positive. Here, they seem, so F is negative. So the sign convention for focal length is that it's positive for convex lenses and it is negative for concave lenses. By the way, there are other names given to this lens. It's called a concave lens. Can you see that if you send in light that's parallel to one another, right? And parallel to the principal axis, after going to the lens, can you see that they that the light rays converge and then move on? So another name for this lens is a converging lens. And also, because the focal length is positive, this type of lens is also called a positive lens. So in the language of optics, if you call a company and you want to, and you talk to a salesperson and you want to buy a convex lens, you can call it a convex lens, or you can call it a, you know, I want to buy a converging lens, or I'm interested in buying a positive lens. Engineers tend to use positive. They can say, okay, let's, well, well, you need a positive lens. So there are three names for the same thing. Convex lens, positive lens, converging lens. Now, what are the other names would you say for the concave lens? Well, what happens to the light rays after going through the lens? Do they converge or diverge? Diverge. So this is called a diverging lens. And because the focal length is negative, because the light rays seem to be at a the focal point, even though they don't, this is called a negative lens. And if you look at your, if you have prescription glasses and you look at the prescription, you know, for the right eye, you need this lens, for the left eye, you need this lens. If just look at the signs, if you see a plus or a minus. If you see a minus sign, you will prescribe a diverging lens. If you see a plus sign, you will prescribe a positive lens, converging lens. Now, let's do the mirrors, the curved mirrors. Can I erase this diagram over here? So I'm only going to do this once, and then we're just going to remember. We're going to write down the convention. But I would a concave lens be for someone who can't like see close? Or am I thinking of this backwards? Huh? Would a concave lens, like for their glasses, be for someone that can't see something that's close to them? Or am I thinking no, of it backwards? No, the other backwards? way around. So <laughs> okay. if you have myopia, oh. you can't really focus on objects that are far away. Like if you drive, you need glasses to be able to read signs and, you know. Uh, so if you have myopia, then you are, uh, you usually see pretty well nearby. So you're nearsighted. So if you're nearsighted, 
uh, you have myopia and you have trouble seeing objects that are far away. And uh, to correct that vision, you'll be prescribed this lens. And we'll talk why this okay. is the lens that works later on when we get there. Oh, okay. <laughs> on the other hand, if you see pretty well objects that are far, far away, but you have trouble seeing objects that are nearby, then you're prescribed a... Okay. Then you have hyperopia, you are farsighted, and you're prescribed a positive lens. Like, you know, this lens is for like reading. So this is a positive lens. If you touch this glass, it'll be thicker in the middle than in the edges. So we'll, we'll talk about that um, later on. Maybe I should talk about it right now before we talk about the. Let's address that right now, since we just talked about this. in there that I'm not going to go over and just, but, but they're there if you can't fall asleep one of these nights and... <laughs> okay, so, okay, okay, um, this is somebody's eyeball. Like, and this person is facing that way. Right? So the surface of it here is the cornea. It's a thin layer, about 500 microns, you know, half a millimeter. The smallest division here is a millimeter, so half of that. It's the thickness of the cornea. If I, if I, if I go like this and I, you know, I touch my eye, I'll be touching my cornea. Yeah, it's just the outer surface of the eye. And so, Light comes in from whatever it is that you're looking at over there, right? And then uh, it's refracted as it goes from air into there's a, the cornea, and then there's a fluid over there. And then uh, the next to that is actually, it doesn't show it over there, but you know, let's say this is somebody's eyeball. I'm going to exaggerate the cornea over here. And then, so the light comes in, right? So this is the cornea here. And then there's some fluid over there. And then there is, an, there's like an iris. An iris, if I look at the iris, it's, it's something that's like this. <laughs> so the, the hole is the iris. Right? So the light only goes through the hole. It hit, if, it, if it hits over here, it doesn't go through. But this this hole, this hole can be open or 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 made smaller or bigger. And the hole, the, the, like the circle over here, they call it the pupil. So either your pupils dilate or you know they. Right. So this is you know this 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 is an iris because it can open and close. That's that's the definition of an iris. Right? It can open and close. And if you are in the dark. You don't have too much light coming into your eyes, so it's not something that you do. This is something that happens naturally. Then your pupils dilate to allow more light to come in, so you see better. And if you're in the dark and all of a sudden, you know, you step outside and it's bright and, and you know, sunny, then it's like, you, you know, you get too much light coming into your eyes, and then the pupils, you know, kind of close. So, oh, that's too much light coming in. Because you were just adapted to the darkness, and now you're coming out into the bright and, you know, it's like you feel like you're being blinded by light. So the iris opens and closes and opens and closes. The hole, the hole that the light goes through is the pupil. The iris is this thing. So, so there's an iris over here, right before this stuff over here, which is called, which is a lens. So there's a lens over here that we are born with, and that's inside the eye. So it's called the intraocular 
lens because intra means inside the eye. It's a lens that's inside the eye. So this is a lens that we are born with. One with each eye. So we're born with those lenses. And so the light makes it through the iris, well, through the pupil, and the iris opens and closes to allow more light to go in. And then there's some other fluid over here. I think it's called vitreous humor. Some liquid aqueous. It's a, a fluid. And then the light, and then the back of the eye, like the back wall of the eye, the inner surface well, over here is called the retina. If the light coming in from the object that you're looking at is focused by your cornea and your intraocular lens at the retina, then you have clear vision. Yes? But if the light comes in through your cornea and it refracts, and then it refracts when it goes to the intraocular lens, and if, if it's not focused in the back of the eye, then you have blurred vision. Nearsighted, for sight, or a combination of both. So, if you have, if you are nearsighted, like if you have myopia, this is what happens. Um, this is your eyeball. A light comes in, and this is your cornea. This is your intraocular lens. Again, the iris is not in there. The people, but that's okay. So it comes in, right? And together, the cornea and the intraocular lens, they focus the light too quickly. So you have blurred vision. So how do you correct it? Uh, what you need to do is you need to spread this light out. Because what happens is this cornea is it's like too curved. If it's too curved, it will focus the light before it gets to the, to the retina. So what you need to do is help the eye. So what type of a lens would you prescribe? And I, okay, so what type of a lens would you prescribe? <laughs> <laughs> to spread out the light so that with the high focusing of the light by your cornea, it focuses in the retina. So you need a negative lens, a diverging lens. I think I actually wrote it up here too. I try to hide that. Corrected by a diverging lens. And with the diverging lens, then uh, it's right here. So in this picture, again, if you have myopia, you have trouble seeing objects that are far away, right? Yeah. Because the light coming from that object going through your eye, it focuses too quickly before it gets to the retina. So by prescribing a diverging lens, the light coming from this object that's far away comes in, right? it spreads out, and then, by, then it goes through the cornea and the intraocular lens, and then it focuses over there. Now, you may say, hmm, is that a diverging lens? Yes, because it's thinner in the middle. Because it's thinner in the middle. If you look in the middle, it's thin and it's thicker in the edges. Just because it's like shaped like that, it doesn't mean it's and this could be a contact lens that also goes right up against the eye with that curvature, but thinner in the middle, thicker in the edges. And then you can have corrected vision. If you don't want to wear the lens, like or a contact lens or uh, you know, in a frame like that, well, what you can do is then remove the lens. Well, don't wear the lens. Go back to this picture. Send in laser pulse it, pulses and, and reshape the cornea. Just boil some cornea off, like, like blast some cornea out. So you make it a little flatter. And with the new curvature, with this intraocular lens, then this focal point is gonna move over there and then you have clear vision with laser surgery. So that's the idea of laser surgery, right? The lasers are used to reshape the cornea so that with the new shape, you don't have to wear glasses. And then you can have corrected vision. Just watch out for those people who... I don't know, there was this 
commercial when I was a kid, Carvel. Do they have Carvel in California? I think it's an East Coast thing. You know, come on Wednesdays and you know you buy one and get the other one free. So, you know, those specials about you know, do one for five hundred bucks and the other one is free. Um, Try, if the doctor sale. messes up, you're screwed. Just research. <laughs> Actually, one of my, um, somebody that I know just recently retired, he's an ophthalmologist. And my mother was going to go undergo one surgery, um, glaucoma. So, I'm sorry, um, cataract surgery. This lens over here that we are born with, right, is made up of a lot of proteins and uh, with age and so on, they get denatured, they don't do what they're supposed to do, they get a little cloudy, and the light doesn't go through as efficiently anymore. And so that lens needs to be removed and replaced. Uh, and so my mom was going to undergo that cataract surgery. Right? Uh, and so I talked to you know this person that I know, and uh, and I said, well, you know, what are the things she should look at in choosing a, an ophthalmologist to do this? And he said, well, look up how many surgeries they do in one day. Um, if they do 20 to 25, then I would trust that person. I said, hmm, doesn't that mean that they rush through it? Well, but it also means that they have a lot of experience and they can do it quickly and they know how to do it with a lot of experience. Hmm, okay. I guess you should then choose a doctor that's gonna spend all the time you need to talk to you and tell you about it, but be efficient in the surgery. So, but anyway, he made that point. He says he used to do like 25 in a day, you know. Because uh, yeah, the, the procedure, I, well, anyway, uh, that's what he said. Now, what if you are foresighted? Like you can see pretty well objects that are far away. Uh, like me, I don't I don't wear glasses when I drive. I no problem. I can you know see far away and you know and it's not a big problem. But for the last five years or so, I've been having trouble focusing on you know what I read and you know in a textbook or you know fine print. So I, I need help. So I am far sighted because I can see pretty well objects that are far away but I'm having trouble focusing on objects that are nearby. And in low level lights, I also have trouble. So what happens in that case is the opposite. What happens is that, so I have hyperopia, and what happens is that, well, one way to think about it, there are two ways to think about it. One way is that my cornea is too flat, or my eyeball is too small, this way. In the other people's case, You could argue your cornea is too curved, or man, you got a big eyeball. <laughs> Obviously, you're not gonna correct this vision by <laughs> doing that to the <laughs> eyeball, right? I mean, that's gonna hurt. I mean, that's not the way to correct it, so you deal with the cornea. So you could say, well, the eyeball is too big, you know, and in this case, uh, or the cornea is too curved. So you just deal with the cornea, and then you don't have to squeeze anybody's eye. In my case, I don't want someone stretching my eye, kind of, you know, just to make this focal point, you know, land over here. I, I don't want someone to just stretch my eye and, you know. So what happens is that, like, well, with age and so on, right? So um, the cornea and, or the intraocular lens, one of them, but, you know, maybe now this is too flat for the size of my eye and so on. So what happens is that I need help focusing the light so that it doesn't have to focus way out there. I want it to focus, you know, in the retina. So what type of a lens would I be prescribed? A converging lens or a diverging lens? Converging, converging lens, because I need help focusing the light more quickly, right? So then you prescribe a converging lens and look at this lens over here. It's thicker in the middle, thin in the edges. And with that, you know, the image is formed in the retina. And then you have clear vision. 
or corrected vision. Anyway, uh, does that mean you can't get laser eye surgeon if you have after treatment? I I I think you do. Um, but what they would do in a case like that, let's say this is my eyeball over here, and it's too flat. Like, well, it's too flat, say. And you wanna give it some curvature. So what they do is, let's say, just, just for the sake of the discussion, let's say I put a penny over here a mask, so I put a penny on here. And then I shine laser light, the diameter is spot size that's bigger than the penny. So what will happen is that the light is not gonna go through the penny, so it's not gonna do anything to this, but the light that's gonna hit over here is gonna boil off cornea from there. And then you finish the surgery and now you remove the penny. So what will you have? Well, you, you, you have this the same because you didn't do anything to that, but now you have this, right? Because you remove that and you remove some of that. So now you have like this. And then, you know, just do that and remove the penny. And now you have a, a, a more curved surface. Uh, you know, they put a, there, there are things that they do. Yeah, don't know the details. I mean, I'm calling it a penny, but it's obviously not a penny. <laughs> But you know, they put like a mask and then you know there are things like that. Um, but anyway, that's that's the answer to your to your question. Uh, how much time do we have? Is it until three or two fifty? I never remember. Two fifty. Two fifty? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was gonna say something about the power of the of the lens, but that's okay. Uh, well I'll talk about that next time.